Canada's Wonderland just made a huge announcement for the 2025 season. This is none other than Alpen Fury, a 3,200-foot long, 71-mile-an-hour, 164-foot tall, 9-inversion Premier Rides multi-launch coaster that'll be the park's first thrill coaster since Yukon Striker in 2019. This new coaster is certainly an attention grabber, and it's the biggest coaster Premier Rides has ever built. Which is not to say Premier has only built kiddie coasters, they have built rides like the Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast coasters, but this is just a completely different level. It's exciting to see Premier Rides get a job like this, because I'm guessing, in minds of the Canada's Wonderland staff, there were a few options here in terms of manufacturer. There was Vacoma, there was Premier, and there was Intamin. Mach may have been on the table too. On the Intamin side, we know that they can build some pretty awesome launch coasters, but it seems like the Cedar Fair side of this new Six Flags chain wants to steer away from Intamin. While Mach and Vacoma also build really solid coasters and have some connection to the Six Flags chain, Premier Rides has a much bigger connection. The Legacy Six Flags side of the merger enjoyed working with Premier Rides. They added multiple coasters from the company, including the first Skyrocket 2, and most recently, they worked with them in 2020 with West Coast Racers at Magic Mountain. So there's definitely a connection on the former Six Flags side, but it's interesting because Canada's Wonderland came from the Cedar Fair side. Cedar Fair has never worked with Premier Rides for a roller coaster. Now, they do have Premier Rides coasters at their parks, but those were added in the Paramount days. Is this the first instance where we've seen a direct effect of the merger? Maybe. It's also possible that Cedar Fair was going to call Premier and add this coaster before the merger, because I'm guessing this contract was finalized before the merger's contract was. The point is, Alpen Fury is a unique addition to a former Cedar Fair park, but it's a really, really exciting one. This coaster is going to be located in the front of the park, and it's going to be the fourth coaster to interact with the mountain. I've never been to Canada's Wonderland, but this 19th coaster is going to definitely change the arrival experience, and I think it can really get guests excited for their day even more than they already are. I've seen some comments and complaints that this could mess up the view at the front of the park when you walk in. To a certain extent, this is true. It'll take some getting used to, in particular for those that have been visiting Canada's Wonderland for a long time. It will be an adjustment, but eventually we'll all get used to it. It kind of reminds me of when Knott's Berry Farm added Silver Bullet in 2004. That coaster's Cobra Roll goes right by the front entrance, and it looks great now, but I'm sure initially it looked wrong. I think it could be a similar situation and a similar adjustment here for Alpen Fury at Canada's Wonderland. I'll talk more later about Canada's Wonderland as a park and how this coaster fits in, but I think there's been enough preamble, and it's about time that we should get into the meat of what Alpen Fury is going to be like when you ride it. One thing I'm curious about is the restraints. We know that this coaster is going to have two trains with three cars per train with two across rows, making for a total of 18 riders per train. The question is, are there going to be comfort callers? All we can go off right now is the animation, but if the animation holds true, this coaster will not have comfort callers, which is an awesome thing. These aren't terribly uncomfortable, but it is more comfortable without them. The aforementioned West Coast Racers at Magic Mountain is still a really solid ride, even with the comfort collar, but it's more freeing and much more comfortable just to have the lap bar. Not to mention, these trains are difficult to get into even when there's just a lap bar. They're really, really tight. I think once you get in them, they're comfortable enough, but it's definitely difficult, especially if you're tall or a heavier person to get in those trains. Once dispatched, riders are going to round a corner to the right and approach your first launch. Not too many stats or specifics for this coaster have been released yet. We don't even know what all the inversions are, but this first launch doesn't look terribly fast, though it does have a nice little boost. After traversing the sideways airtime hill, you dip to the right and go inside the mountain, hitting your second launch. This is probably where you hit your top speed of 71.5 miles an hour. You rocket up out of the mountain and into your first inversion. Now, I gotta stop right here. Is anyone else reminded of Volcano the Blast Coaster here? We just talked last week about Raptera being added to King's Dominion as the replacement to Volcano, and here's a coaster kind of modeling that ride. Here, you pop upside down for the first time, initially twisting to the right before twisting back to the left and all the way back down to the ground. I'm guessing this is where the top drop of 154 feet is as well. Going from dark to light like that is going to be disorienting. You twist a little bit to the right and into this wave turn sort of element. These types of moments seem to be popping up on coasters all over the place, and if it hits, it can provide a nice moment of sideways airtime. It also looks like you get pretty close to going upside down here, but don't quite invert. From here, you twist up and into another inversion. This looks to be a straight up classic 0G stall. 0G stalls are some of the best moments when done right on any coaster. 
Companies like Rocky Mountain Construction have darn near perfected these. Premier Rides hasn't experimented with zero-g stalls nearly as often, so it'll be interesting to see how it feels on a Premier coaster. Granted, Premier does do hang time very well. Of course, the Skyrocket 2 model has lots of hang time with that inline twist, and then Full Throttle has maybe the best hang time moment in the world with that vertical loop. Premier can do hang time. Now I look forward to seeing it on a stall. Next up is an upward helix. This probably gives decent G's, and it leads into what looks to be a dive loop. This is the farthest point of the coaster, and from here you start going back the way you came towards the mountain and deeper into the park. Next is what almost looks to be Premier's take on the lagoon roll. You flip upside down to the left, but ultimately end up twisting back down to the right. This could be a slightly disorienting moment. And now you have back-to-back -back inversions. Are these inline twists? Are they corkscrews? I'm not entirely sure, but the second one goes down to the ground, reminding me a lot of Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. It also reminds me a bit of those Intamin 10 inversion coasters like Colossus at Fort Park that feature back-to-back-to-back-to-back -back 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 heartline rolls. This isn't nearly as wild. It's only two in a row instead of four in a row, but it's still a cool feature. There also looks to be some great near misses here as you head back towards the station. After an airtime hill, you pop up into one last inversion, which might be a corkscrew, and from there, you have one more bunny hill into the brakes. Safe to say, this coaster is impressive. It goes 71.5 miles an hour, as I mentioned earlier, and it keeps its speed until the very end. There's no doubt that this is an inversion-based ride with those nine inversions, and the layout looks really well put together. When this coaster opens, it'll have the third most inversions in the world, and it'll be the only coaster to feature nine inversions. Those ten inversion coasters I mentioned earlier have more, and then of course the Smile at Alton Towers has a ridiculous 14. That record might not be touched for a while, but in terms of North America, you have a new record holder, and it's Alpen Fury. This, to me, looks like a stellar attraction from start to finish, in particular if you love launches and flipping upside down. As I alluded to earlier, this will be the park's 19th coaster. Canada's Wonderland has the third most coasters out of any park in the world. The complaint among many people and many coaster enthusiasts, though, is that for a long time, Canada's Wonderland's coaster lineup has had quantity, but not quality. But slowly, over time, in particular after Cedar Fair took over in 2006, that's been getting better. 2008 was the first big step. This is when Behemoth, the B&M Hyper Coaster, was added. This was the launch pad for their edition four years later. In 2012, they opened the world's first B&M Giga Leviathan. This was very well received, and it became evident that Cedar Fair wanted to invest into Canada's Wonderland. Two years later, they added a more family-friendly attraction, the roller coaster dark ride hybrid Wonder Mountain's Guardian. Five years later, in 2019, it was back to the major B&M thrill rides with Yukon Striker, the world's biggest dive coaster. And their most recent coaster edition before Alpen Fury was the kids coaster, Snoopy's Racing Railway, which opened in 2023. This is obviously not much, but it's an adorable little kids ride. It's clear that Cedar Fair wanted to pour investment into this park. Will the new Six Flags chain? I think so. It's Canada's biggest theme park, they're so close to 20 coasters, and it seems to be very profitable. I think Alpen Fury fits really, really well into Canada's Wonderland's lineup. Despite all the coasters, they only have two launch coasters. Snoopy's Racing Railway, the Kids Coaster, and Backlot Stunt Coaster, the Family Ride. Of course, they don't have a coaster with 9 inversions either, so in general, I think this is an excellent addition, and it's going to make one of the best parks in the new Six Flags chain even better. So those are some of my thoughts on Alpen Fury coming to Canada's Wonderland in Vaughan, Ontario, Canada for the 2025 season. It's early to predict how it's going to rank up against the other new for 2025 coasters, but I can assure you this, it's going to be one of the better ones. So, thank you so much for watching. If you want more roller coaster and theme park news updates, then please subscribe down below, and we'll see you next time.